All right, let's recreate this Lego style swap mechanic for controlling two different characters. All right, so if you don't know, the Lego swap mechanic that what I am referring to is the swapping system from pretty much every single Lego game. So in these Lego games, if you've never played them, you get two characters and of course you can swap them out to different characters in this case we've got batman and um i'm assuming that's a robin over there yeah so it's right there it's low quality uh, viewing up here but um at this point if nobody's controlling the second character you can hit the swap button and you see we get these little particles in this case uh it's three little balls and they have trails and they're gonna go from the character that you are contr currently controlling and they're gonna shoot over to the character you're swapping to and then you'll be able to move that character All right and as you see there uh they hit the button multiple times jumping back and forth and basically when you're not controlling the character that controller that character is then controlled by ai and all i'm doing for that just to show you that i don't when i do have control when i don't is i'm just rotating my sprite now this same logic can apply to both 2D and 3D. Uh, we don't really need to make any changes to it. All right, so I'm gonna close the video and we can go ahead and jump on in. All right, so I'm gonna start anew. So all I've got here is I've got two character bodies here so I can control them. They each have a sprite. And my little visual here is just a, if I bring it out, it's just a little sprite I'm working in 2D here. Again, you can, uh, do this in however way you really want you could use a 3d object if you're working in 3d um, there's videos out there to show you how to make a trail so you can add a trail to your 3d object to get that swapping uh, to be closer visually and you could do the same thing here but i'm not going to bother with putting a trail in here because that's just extra things that's not necessary for the mechanic to work it's that's extra floor that you can put in there so i'm just going to use a sprite and I've shrunk it down to 0.25 on its scale that way we don't get confused but it's still visual or it can still visually be seen in the video All right, so I'm just gonna set that to hide by default and it doesn't matter where it's at, where it's at at the moment so let's go ahead and we can go ahead and jump in so both my characters are gonna share the same script so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new script and I'm going to call this character, uh, I'm going to character control. Uh, I'm going to use the character body 2D template just so most of the controls are already created for us. And I'm just going to hit create. All right, I'm now going to go into my file system, grab that script we just created and also add that onto character two. So now they both have the same script. And the first thing I'm going to do, remove jump velocity because there's no jumping in this specifically and if there's no jumping then we don't need any gravity to come back down i can remove is on floor section and i can remove the jump controls all right so at this point all we should be left with if i remove that comment is our controls here getting the input axis for moving left and right for the direction and if we have a direction our velocity gets set Otherwise, we're, I mean, really, we're not moving. And this is where we should be sitting at. All right. So to get started on here, we're going to need a few variables here. And I'm going to export them. We're going to need in control. And this is basically going to tell us which character we're controlling here at the current time. I'm going to set this to true by default. Got the word var in there and then i'm going to click over to character two and i'm going to look in the inspector and turn in control and uncheck it so now it's false for character two and true for character one all right so next i'm going to go ahead and get a hold of the other character so export var and 
I'm just going to call this other character. And this is, of course, going to be a character body 2D. If you're working in 3D, this can be a character body 3D. And with that exported, I can go ahead and just go into the inspector. And on character 1, I'll hit assign and select character 2. On character 2, I'll go in the inspector, hit assign, and select character 1. All right, so now other character is referencing each other. Character 2 is referencing character 1. Character 1 is referencing character 2. All right. And the only other variable we need here, um, we can just go ahead and use non-ready if you wanted to. Uh, you can use an export as well. It doesn't really matter. I just don't want to set it on both characters. So I'm just going to use a non-ready today. And I'm going to call this swapper. And this is just going to be our visual swapper that we're using, which in my case, is just a sprite 2D. And that's going to be a get parent dot get node and visual swapper. There we go. And those are the only variables we're going to need. If you want to avoid magic numbers, then you could create one more in here uh, just for a uh, transition time or swapping time. Uh, if you want to do, to do that, to remove any fact of magical numbers, as they're called. But that's completely up to you. I'm not going to do it for this one. And first thing we need to do, if we go ahead and play this scene and take a look, well, notice both of our characters are moving, which makes sense. They're sharing the same script. So what we need to do is we need to make it so that we only control one character at a time. And the easiest way for us to do this is just to grab everything inside of our physics process here. Tab to move it in one. And we're just sticking all of that inside of an if statement saying if in control. That's all we have to do. And now when we run it, you'll see when we try to move, we'll only be moving one character because character two should have that set to false by default. And I'm going to get rid of that debugger at the bottom by putting an underscore there. But with that, you see, we can only move one character. So now you'll see when if, if in control is true on character one, we'll control that. If it's true on character two, we'll control that one. So if you got this far and your both of your characters are still moving, then you need to go back to character two, check in the inspector and make sure you have in control unchecked. All right. So next up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the input function. Now we could st just stick this inside a physics process. It's perfectly fine, but I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead with funk input and I'll put an underscore there because I'm not going to use the input uh, argument. And to know ahead of time, I did create a an action. So I went into my input mapper in the project settings and I added a action called swap. And for me, I set that to my R key. And all I'm going to do here now, so I'm going to say if input dot is action just pressed, I could use just released. Both of these will work, but you do not want to go with pressed here because pressed would imply that it's held down and we don't want that. Pressed is when you push the button down and just released is when you lift up off of the button. So the button comes back up. So this is a little bit of a personal preference. Doesn't matter a whole lot. I'm just going to go with pressed, put my swap action in there. And something that I want to put in is and in control. All right, so if we're controlling this character and we press our swap button, then we want something to happen. And what we want to happen, as you would imagine, is we want to do self dot in control to get set to false. And we want to get other character and set in control uh, to true. Now we can do this for now, but if we go ahead and run this and you take a look, you'll notice we do have a bug and it might not seem obvious at first, but we can move our first character and we'll hit R to swap. We can move our second character. That's great. So it might be okay. It works and close and keep moving, but no, we have to keep testing. We hit our swap button again and oh, look at that. We're still controlling the second character. No matter how many times I try to hit this swap button, 
Well, that's interesting. Why is that? Well, what is happening, if we were to break it down uh, very quickly uh, here, we'll, we'll see that we're actually, this is triggered on our first character, right? So we're setting ourselves to false. And other characters getting set to true, that's great. But then when we try to swap back, we set ourselves to false and we set the other character, so character one in this case, back to true. But then this also triggers on character one because it's going, I guess, so quick. So this is where we need to put a small pause in. So in between these two, we're just going to use an await, get tree dot. We could use a create timer of a 0 0.1. And this will work here. Uh, if we were to try that out. So we can take a look now. We can see we move player one, swap, player two, swap, and we're back to player one. Now, right. now alternatively, if you don't want to use a very short timer there and you want to close the gap even more, make it even more seamless, what you could do is instead of waiting for a timer to time out, we can await get tree dot process frame and this will wait until the next frame and then set them to true. So that will also prevent uh, character one from reactivating when trying to swap from character two to character one. As you can see there, it's working perfectly fine, just like it did with the uh, timer. So that's up to you which route you want to go with that. Um, myself, I could go with that. You know, I'm just going to leave that as there and I'll see how this looks at the end. Um, because I do do uh, sync this up a little bit, but we'll see. We'll go with the process there. And what I'm going to do is. Well, at this point, this is perfectly working um, to show this a little more visually. I'll go ahead and add the rotation that's on the beginning. So if in control, we have our options else. And this, I'm just going to set self dot rotation degrees plus equals one. So that's going to have the character rotating around. So inside of this else block here is where you want to have whatever AI logic you want for the character when you're not controlling them. All right. So hopefully that makes that a little clearer. And all that's left is for us to have that visual indicator for our swapper jumping from point A to point B. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create a tween. So var t equals create tween. And we're going to go ahead and set swapper dot visible to true because we want it to be shown now. We're then going to make sure its position is set. So swapper dot global position equals self dot whoops global position All right so now we're going we're on whatever character we're controlling and now we need to move it and we need to do this dynamically because we don't know where this character is going to be at All right so we'll go ahead and do t for our tween dot uh, tween property the object that we want to tween is going to be our swapper. The property we want to tween is the position. The final value that we want is going to be on other character dot global position. And the duration we want it to take place, I'm going to use 0 0.1. Uh, but if you're having, if you have the frames locked, say at 60, then you can go ahead and I believe 0 0.0. Uh, one six is that I, I think that's 60 frames uh, there might be another zero in there not 100% sure there but I'm just gonna go ahead and set it to 0 0.1 and see how that looks and we do need to make sure of one more thing here we need to await for our transition to our tween to finish here so await t dot finished 
And then we'll go ahead and hide our swapper again. So swapper dot visible equals uh, false. You could also do swapper dot hide and swapper dot not show up here if you want to, but I tend to go with true and false myself. All right, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. All right, so we're moving around. Looks great. I swap and there you go. So you can see our little uh, transition visually and we gain control of the other character. All right, so you can easily take this approach and apply this to 3D and it'll work uh, exactly the same. Obviously, it's not gonna go global position here. You're gonna be looking at going through uh, or possibly going through all your other situations. Maybe you're using basis, uh, for example. Um, but either way, that's gonna that's just one of those small nuances when you're going from 2d to 3d completely up to you uh, and the way your systems and that are set up the only other change that you would really need here is of course instead of a 2d you'd be getting a 3d character uh, but everything else would pretty much remain the same your swapper is probably going to be different it's probably going to be not a sprite 2d right? could be a sprite when it's in 3d as well i suppose um but with that, hopefully that uh, makes sense to you guys. And with that, I'll say take care, have yourselves a good one, and hopefully you guys learned something from this.